I have spent 21 years in the state of Maine, and I love living here. And I will tell y'all, it is just a wonderful place to live, but I still can't quite find enough grease in the cooking. I'm still working on it. I was at Whole Foods a couple weeks ago. I was buying beer. I can't afford food there. And I was checking out, and they had this new marketing campaign that collard greens are the new kale. And the little girl at the cash register said, ma'am, did you know that collards are the new kale? I said, honey, do you know my family cooks collard greens and bacon grease until they oink and they no longer resemble vegetables? <laughs> she started to cry. She said, I don't know what you're saying to me. I'm vegan. <laughs> It's like, no, honey, you're just anemic. You know, just, you're very pale. Get in my car. I'm going to take you to Arby's right now and get you a sandwich. Come with me. Before I became a comedian, I was a trial attorney. And um, on my resume, this is a lateral move. We're working that through. We're still working on it. I was a criminal defense attorney. I started in Atlanta, and I came up to Maine. And, and Maine does have a very low crime rate. But when we have crime in Maine, it's hilarious. We had the Zumba lady. I loved her. Oh, just a gift. Just a gift. If you weren't around for the Zumba lady, I'll refresh your memory. She had a Zumba class, and I guess it was going kind of slow. And they... <laughs> And her friend said, well, how can we get more people? And she said, well, we'll just start having sex with people. <laughs> and then it became very popular. <laughs> and then they got, they got caught. I guess some husband told his wife he was going to a Zumba class at 3 a.m. And then the, the thing was all up at that point. <laughs> but what I think is great now is that you can't open a Zumba class because everybody will think you're associated with prostitution, <laughs> right? So if you open up a class, you have to call it something else like dance fitness or fit to dance or we're not hookers. <laughs> it's a whole different thing. One of my favorite cases in Maine, it was a few years ago up in Skowhegan. There was a guy, it had been a long winter. Um, he had a couple of drinks, maybe like 18 or so. <laughs> Allen coffee brandies, maybe some pharmaceuticals, just a little party by himself. He's having a good time. He went out in his driveway and he took off all of his clothes. Every bit of his clothes, completely naked. He got into his truck. He drove his truck down the street and apparently he did not like his neighbor. So he drove his truck in, right into the neighbor's living room, into the front wall of the neighbor's house. And then he got out of the truck naked and started to fight the guy <laughs> that lived in the house. Now, the guy that lived in the house took out a hammer and beat the crap out of the naked guy. And then when the people came to interview everybody, they asked the guy with a the hammer, they're like, we're just kind of curious about your hammer. And he was like, well, I was in my living room. Thankfully, I keep a hammer there. <laughs> just for this kind of situation. He said that on the news. Like, he, like he went to Home Depot ahead of time. I was like, you know what? I'm looking for a tool for if I am sitting in my chair in my boxer shorts watching the Patriots game and then a dump truck comes in the front of my house and a naked guy high on drugs gets out and starts to fight me. What kind of tool do you think I should use for that? <laughs> and they were like, oh, that'd be a number 10 ball peen hammer, obviously. 